Harry Potter, a franchise filled with magic and adventure, a classic, one of the most popular pieces of media ever made. I think we can accept that. But the older you get, the more holes you start to see in things. And so today I wanna to let out my inner child and complain about something that's bothered me on and off for years. And you know, by that, I don't mean I'm just sitting there brooding about this all hours of the day. I'm not waking up in a cold sweat panicking about it. It's not haunting my dreams. But every time I watch the Chamber of Secrets, you know, sometimes you're channel surfing and it comes up on TV. Or if I see the book in a store, it all just comes rushing back. And that is, I have a bit of a problem with the major point of drama in the film slash book itself. How the hell is there a giant death snake slithering its big fat ass through the school and not a single person is able to figure this out except for a little girl? Okay, but we need some context, right? When the founders of Hogwarts created the school, they each chose students based on specific sets of traits. Bravery, intelligence, loyalty, racism, the core tenets of any British boarding school. But over time, Slytherin got so salty that the other co-founders were teaching Muggleborn students that he went full psycho and built a secret murder chamber deep in the bowels of the school, hidden away from the world, leaving within a little baby basilisk who was able to hibernate for years at a time and awaken when summoned by a member of the Slytherin bloodline. It's at this point that the snake would perform an ethnic cleansing using its deadly stare and its nearly impenetrable skin and deadly venom, and also its immense size. All in all, the basilisk is serious business and could wipe out the entire school feasting in the Great Hall if it snuck up on them. And yeah, I think it's definitely an extreme reaction to not being a huge fan of the demographics at your school, Especially since he wasn't even teaching them, his friends were. But okay, I guess that's just how it is. So yeah, we then come to the first of my annoyances with this storyline. How did nobody figure out about this chamber? How could it possibly remain hidden for so long? Okay, so we know that Voldemort is a descendant of Salazar Slytherin. That makes sense so far. But is he seriously the last one? A thousand years and he has one living descendant. Okay. So now I'm expected to believe that there's only one person in the entire world descended from this family that survived unbroken to the modern day. And thus there's only one person out of what you'd have to assume are thousands and thousands of people that are aware of the Chamber of Secrets. And I'm saying thousands and thousands because wizards don't seem to have a lot of people. But on top of that, we're told that over the years the Gaunt family did their best to protect its location, even going so far as to conceal its entrance in the girls' bathroom when Hogwarts finally got around to overhauling its plumbing. And the less said about that weird little tidbit, the better. But yes, I'm expected to believe that nobody ever found it. That nobody ever noticed the very obvious serpent marking on the tap and thought, ooh, that's interesting, I wonder if that's significant. That no one found it after Moaning Myrtle died of no apparent cause in the bathroom. You'd think somebody like, I don't know, Dumbledore would scour the place and root out any potential secrets. Doesn't miss a trick, that man? Oh, no. Are you sure about that? But nope, didn't notice a single thing at all. Also, after a number of petrifications in the school year and the death of a student years prior, you think that Dumbledore would pretty quickly, being a decently smart man, and perhaps that's underselling him, he's in fact among the greatest wizards ever, but would he not think, ooh, actually seems like it might be a basilisk. But he seemingly just doesn't figure that out, and if he does, wouldn't he have had the entire school evacuated instantly? Nobody could be that callous or negligent, could they? I mean, the wizarding world seems to have some pretty low standards about child safety, Note the tournament of death that they offer up to students during the fourth book slash film. But regardless, come on Dumby, what are you doing son? And not only that, but the fact that somebody of his caliber, along with the rest of the historical wizarding world, was unable to piece together this puzzle implies there must have been some mega spell on it to prevent people finding it. But nope, a bunch of 12 year olds solve the puzzle of what the monster is, where the chamber's entrance would be, simply based on the evidence that they very, very easily have presented to them. And so, this is the first logical leap that I'm having to deal with. Like, come on now. I love the story, but for God's sake, this is one of the most egregious examples in the history of literature. In the history of film, where the adults are dumbed down to the point of outright malicious incompetence in order to set up the young protagonists of your teen fantasy or young adult novel as the almighty savior who kicks ass and rescues the plebs. I mean, there's certainly other examples from within the overall story of Harry Potter that are up there with this, but I don't think any of them actually come close to this one. It's just ridiculous overall when you actually sit down to think about it, and it's really poor writing in my eyes. And then we come to my second major grievance, and this one's less, oh this is dumb, I don't like it, levels of stuff, and more, oh. Well this is a quite a silly visual, and it's making it hard for me to take the rest of it seriously as a result. That's the level of grievance we're dealing with here, and that is, how does the basilisk get around the castle, and how is it petrifying people? 
The impression I get is that the basilisk travels around the castle using the pipes, the plumbing. All right, must be some pretty mammoth sized pipes that they've installed in the school. But I guess we'll just have to accept that. But how does it petrify people? Like, it's not staring at them out of a drain, is it? Because I'm pretty sure you actually need people to see it, right? Because if you're looking somewhere and you don't actually notice it, does that count as seeing it? I don't think so. And on top of that, the context of where each victim is and the position they're in, it kind of suggests these things just lurking in the corridors. So what, he follows his victims around the aforementioned giant pipes that nobody questions when they were being installed? Like seriously, what's that conversation? Hey man, why are the pipes so big? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. And then I guess these pipes have to have numerous exit points beyond just that bathroom so that he can do his little ambush tactics. In that case, how is nobody noticing this? Like one entrance, secreted away in a bathroom, I get it, nobody wants the rep as the bathroom lurker, so you're not going to investigate too much. But what about all the other entry and exit points? They can't all be that incognito in a castle filled with secrets and a horde of students eager to uncover said secrets for a thousand years or more. But let's just say that those exit points don't exist. This means the thing has to slither its ass out of the girl's bathroom on the second floor and then go all the way to wherever he can feel his victim is, also whilst not being seen at all. How did none of the thousands of portraits on the walls, many of whom can speak to one another, not notice this massive thing just chilling? How do they not notice it making its way to a murder site? Don't they think, oh Jesus, that's a big snake? I mean, I've mentioned this to people before and they always hit me with things like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a kid's book. Don't take it too seriously. Just enjoy the story, man. Don't think too deeply. Before they hit me with a rant about how the films are inferior to the books, completely ignorant of their hypocrisy, so I don't listen to them. So yeah, it just, it just, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Like when Hermione's going around the corner with the mirror, is he just waiting there, giant and massive, in the hallway going, surprise, bitch? Like, come on. The Chamber of Secrets is weird, it's confusing, and I need answers. Somebody, do you have the answers? I need to know. And so now I throw it to you. What do you think of my gripes? Do you have an explanation? Do you agree with me? Maybe not? I'm curious of your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.